loud. Um, so I studied bottlenose dolphins and belugas with Deirdre Yader and Heather Hill at Sacred Heart University and St. Mary's University, respectively. So first I'd like to tell you a little bit about my study subjects. So beluga whales um, and bottlenose dolphins are both cetaceans, although they are in different families. Belugas share their family and their arctic habitat with the narwhals. Um, and they are uh, an arctic species, so they have massive amounts of blubber, as well as having lost their dorsal fin, that's characteristic of most cetaceans, in order to be able to peek out of little holes in the sea ice and breathe. Um, whereas bottlenose dolphins still have that characteristic dorsal fin, and they also have very streamlined and fast-moving bodies. They're considerably smaller than the belugas, at about 700 pounds, whereas the belugas are around 3,000. Um, and uh, they live in temperate waters um, compared to the belugas in the Arctic. So one of the more important traits for these animals is their ability to tell the difference between new and familiar stimuli in their environments, especially with um, the changing ocean climate and migration as well as regular seasonal change. So this includes being able to tell the difference between food and a potential threat and also between conspecifics such as their siblings and a potential mate. Um, so when they're distinguishing between these stimuli, um, greater efficiency in brain processing of the visual data can be very helpful. And because of this, they can use something called lateralization, which is um, using a different hemisphere of the brain for different kinds of data, as the brain um, hemispheres process things um, with different amounts of efficiency. So in this, uh, picture of a human brain, um, you can see that in the left visual field, um, the data travels down the optic nerve and actually ends up in the right hemisphere. And for the right visual field, it ends up in the left hemisphere. And um, cetaceans have the same kind of brain anatomy. Um, so in this way, the eye that they use, especially as their eyes are further on the sides of their heads than humans, they can almost choose the speed um, depending on which stimuli they are looking at. So previous research looking into this lateralization in cetaceans has shown that they do use, can use one eye or the other for different stimuli, and also that they spend different amounts of time looking at these different stimuli. So they do gaze longer at unfamiliar stimuli, um, and this is because they have to take in more of that data, learn the details, and then um, you know, catalog that for memory in order to use it in the future. They also tend to gaze longer at movement, um, possibly because these stimuli can then, pop, then move towards them and become a potential threat. Um, they also have shown uh, a greater left eye use when looking at familiar stimuli, as well as humans. Um, and a greater eye, uh, right eye use when looking at unfamiliar stimuli and objects. And again, this has to do with which hemisphere is better at processing this data. And although these trends aren't concrete, um, they do show um, across species as well as within species, um, but given a great amount of individual difference as well. So what we wanted to look at was this continued trend of um, unfamiliar stimuli giving longer gazes in cetaceans. Um, although a lot of research has been done with bottlenose dolphins, there's been less with belugas. Um, so we wanted to see if that trend would hold as well as that laterality trend towards a left eye bias for unfamiliar stimuli, or oh, sorry, familiar stimuli and humans um, in both species, especially belugas, this had never been investigated. So additionally, um, belugas and bottlenose dolphins were seen to have longer gaze durations when compared to a different species of dolphin, the Pacific white-sided dolphin. So we wanted to have some direct comparisons of the species, as well as seeing those nuances in lateral. We weren't expecting them to show great differences, but again, there's a strong individual influence. So how we did this was we chose two different factors to investigate. So we chose the factor of novelty, showing familiar and unfamiliar stimuli, as well as the type of stimulus, either human or object. So this created four different stimuli types overall for our testing. And these animals were all housed in aquariums under managed care, so they, um, encountered familiar humans all the time, um, those being their animal care and training staff at both SeaWorld San Antonio in Texas and Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut. The unfamiliar humans were the research assistants and guests, 
who were around at the aquarium. Um, once these people had been shown to the animals, they were not used for any other trials to preserve that novelty. The familiar objects were things that the animals encountered nearly every day, such as toys, enrichment devices, um, such as this large floating buoy. And the unfamiliar objects were human household objects that were similar in size to the familiar objects, such as large stuffed animals and even a suitcase. <laughs> so in order to present these stimuli to the animals, um, we set up a table about a meter away from the front of their pools, and we uh, set up a curtain behind this table in order to provide a blank backdrop for a stimuli and also to hide the researchers um, behind. Uh, stimuli were presented in pairs, so one was placed out on the table if it was an object, if it was a human they stood next to the table, and that remained there for two minutes. At the two minute mark, it was switched for a second stimulus, and this second stimulus always differed by at least one factor, either the novelty or the class type or both. So for our dolphins, they didn't have any underwater viewing windows. So as you can see, this tank is below the table. The animals had to breach in order to view it. However, the belugas viewed through the glass. And you can see this in this picture of one of our setups. Um, the belugas were incredibly interested in this unfamiliar object, this little <laughs> stuffed giraffe. And you can also see the curtain that has set up along with a researcher carefully hiding behind it. Um, and again, the unfamiliar stimuli. This is a photo, um, a still taken from our recording camera, and this is how we analyzed all our data was via recording, so there wasn't a human um, confounding the results out in the open. So once we analyzed this data, we found um, some surprising results. Although the animals um, looked distinctly less at the control, which is just that blank table, than any of our presented stimuli, our presented stimuli showed no significant differences. This was also seen across the large categories. So again, we were expecting to see longer gaze durations for unfamiliar stimuli. However, it was not significantly different from familiar stimuli. This held true for humans as objects as well. Um, and we um, weren't expecting that. It's possible that because we changed two factors and that every single stimuli was different, which has not been done in the past, that the animals were just consistently interested across all four types. So they did show some, so show some differences in eye use. This graph is the gaze, average gaze duration in seconds when using both eyes overall stimuli, or using eyes for overall stimuli. So both dolphins and belugas showed the greatest gaze duration when using both eyes. However, belugas used their monocular vision, either their left or their right eye, significantly shorter gaze durations compared to this is again seen in their frequency of use. So this is the number of trials for which they preferred either of the three eye uses. Again, belugas greatly preferred both eye use, whereas the dolphins preferred using their right eye alone and used both eyes significantly less than the belugas did. This is quite possibly because belugas have an articulated neck and they are able to turn their head while swimming in the same direction. So they were able to do a lot of pass bys and sort of side eye the um, stimulus or turn both eyes while still moving in the same direction. The dolphins had more pass bys with a single eye and did not orient to the stimulus as much as the belugas did. So our overall conclusions are that belugas again prefer their binocular vision for processing overall, whereas dolphins prefer that monocular right eye use. Also, the individual differences were very strong in our results. Um, although the belugas did um, were analyzed as a group, the individual showed great differences in gaze duration. Um, the belugas also had um, significant amounts uh, or a significant difference in the social groupings of their um, environment. They had both sexes and multiple ages within the pool, whereas the dolphins were only mothers and calves and were all female. It's quite possible that the social interactions that the belugas experienced were um, competitively uh, distracting or competitive for interest during our stimulus presentation. Because the animals were in a free swim context, they chose to come to the stimuli, and it's possible that they just were more interested in their family than they were in things outside on the table. <laughs> so for future studies, we want to um, possibly adjust this free swim context or this paradigm um, in order to get to more of the nuances of 
um, this laterality as well as the gaze duration for different stimuli. And we also want to investigate the influence that sex and age mm. could have um, across these different things. Um, it has been seen in past studies that um, the different sexes do seem to gaze differently or participate in enrichment at different amounts, and um, this could definitely be uh, part of gaze duration and laterality for these stimuli overall. So with that, I just want to acknowledge um, a few people who helped me out, um, Dr. Darren Yeater and Heather Hill, um, who helped me with the data and um, were the main providers and mentors from the study, and also Tara Duffy, my Northeastern mentor, and of course my uh, three C's 36 cohort for their support and entertainment. <laughs> is actually one of our study subjects. This is Juno at Mystic Aquarium. Um, he, <laughs> he is actually nearly an outlier in our project because he tends to orient to anything that you put in front of him. Um, on our individual graphs, most of the bluegas are relatively the same. It's a, you know, some variation, and Juno is like way up on the scale. <laughs> 